right, here's our 30 caliber Hatson Mod 130 QE. And I had some requests to diesel some pellets, and I've actually known what dieseling is for a very long time. It's just I haven't done it in probably 20 years. And what I'm going to do today is I actually I'm going to use Vaseline. I know there's probably better better things out there, but the reason why Vaseline is because I can fill each one of these consistently with the same amount. So that's what I've got in there. I put the exact same amount in there. So I'm going to test our, our regular pellets here that are not diesel. These are our 48.6 grain, same as these. Um, and we'll see if there's a difference in velocity. And to test that, I'm going to test against the Blazer 40 grain 22 long rifle here and this uh, 24 inch rifle. Uh, this is basically the mini mag that's not plated. That's that's what the Blazer is essentially. And see, we have our coconut here. We could not get through this before, so maybe we'll try that. But we're going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time with the diesel pellets versus the, the non-diesel pellets. See if there's actually a difference in that velocity and the accuracy. So we're going to go through our gel block. We're going to see, uh, we're going to shoot up here and see what kind of penetration we get. I know I have some air bubbles in here. Uh, I had to shut this off early last night, so I don't think it's going to matter with our pellet gun test here. But before we got about seven inches, and I'm going to shoot up here, we got about seven inches penetration with our pellets that were non diesel And that kind of leads me to think that eight inches would be about lethal because we are at seven inches or so when we just barely got through our baloney pack. We didn't get through it at all with our first shot. So I'm thinking eight inches, and this should represent getting through this possibly. But this is going to be the ultimate standard here. If we can punch through this, and hit water with one shot, I think that in and of itself would indicate lethality. And then we're also gonna fire from 25 yards at the gong to see what we get. So let's get started with this test. All right, first up, we're gonna do our 22 long rifle. I'm about seven yards from the target, about six yards from the chronograph. Um, I think these are rated at 1200 feet per second. I'm not really sure. Let's see what we get with the 22 long rifle. 1210, 1180, 1181, 1165, 1195, not too bad. Let's try the pellet rifle with the non diesel pellets and see how those do. All right, here is our 30 caliber pellet rifle with just a standard pellet. Not diesel or anything. Let's see what this does. <laughs> no read. I think I'll have some trouble with this, like we had last time. And every time I've tested pellet guns. Five thirty-eight. 528, 525, 534. No, right, let's try our diesel pellets and see how those do. All right, I'm gonna carefully load these diesel pellets so I don't lose a lot of this stuff. And uh, see what we got with the diesel pellet. Six ninety two. <laughs> it's a lot more power. Seven forty eight. Wow. Seven oh six. Six eighty nine. It's funny because there's a lot of recoil that comes back on the trigger. But this is relatively consistent. So I think this method of loading these before I came out is doing pretty well. No re. 719, so overall, I'm gonna say that's really significant because we're not talking a seven grain pellet, we're talking a 48.6 grain pellet that's heavier than a lot of bullets. So when we're talking 
as much as 200 feet per second more. That's a lot more. That is a lot more. So let's hit our ballistic gel block with the 22 and with our diesel pellet. We already know what the standard one will do. It does about, you know, seven inches in there or so. And we'll see how the diesel pellet compares to the 22. All right, first up our 40 grain 22 long rifle. We'll see what this does. <laughs> nice it tumbled and what we can see here we are at you know there's no damage path past this but we're at 15 and three quarters almost so that's just enough block to catch that pretty impressive here because we can see that's where it tumbled uh, let's try the pellet gun all right pellet gun i'm not going to use um the standard one because there's probably residue of this vaseline in there and that might skew the results. And we already had a previous test where we saw we got, uh, you know, right around seven inches. So let's see what this does. <laughs> and our ballistics gel. Wow. Wow, absolute wow. We hit 13 inches <laughs> and then it came back and it rusted. It, even, even the base of it's resting at about 10 inches even. So we could definitely call that. And I think we're gonna know what we're gonna see when we hit our, um, our juggernaut box. So let's hit that and see what happens. All right, so I'm not gonna shoot the 22 into the juggernaut box because we know pretty much what would happen then. Um, it would just pass through pretty easily, probably end up in our fourth jug, something like that. Uh, I'm going to hit this up real close with that 30 caliber diesel pellet, see what happens. <laughs> We're leaking. We are definitely leaking. Wow. I'm impressed. And this is rivaling a firearm because, you know, it went right through that baloney pack, no problem. And it hit this and we can tell just by looking at it, that's probably about uh, a 40 caliber hole. <laughs> so that pellet is mushrooming and we have a massive amount of damage coming out the back of that fiber board. And this thing is absolutely full of debris. Our pellet is in here but it cracked out the back here. Uh, so, you know, my new um, comparison to ballistic gel with our blowing pack is probably gonna be eight inches for that pack. And then we have probably about four inches. So that's about 12 inches. And what we saw in the gel here, you know, we are between 10 and 13. So, this is absolutely deadly. I've seen plenty of 380 ACP rounds that did exactly this. There's all kinds of debris in there. This is awesome. This is totally awesome. I was not expecting to see that. So I am curious now. I am curious now. I'm going to put up a new piece of fiber board on that baloney pack because I only brought one. And I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit this with the uh, 22 and see how it compares. All right, I'm going to hit this baloney pack. I got a fresh fiber board. I'm going to hit the baloney in a different spot. See what happens. Definitely a lot more punch to that 22 versus that pellet gun. And there's no surprise that this just pretty much punched through. Uh, we don't have a lot of damage, less damage than the pellet gun. And actually, through our fiber board, a lot smaller hole. Interesting. Let's see what we got in water jugs. All right, our first jug we went through. No surprise, we went through all of that first jug. Impact on two. Impact on three. We went through three. There's a hole in four. 
I had estimated maybe it would stop in four. Yeah, this stopped in four. <laughs> Guess my guess was pretty close. Let's see what we got. And we got some mushrooming here. It's not as extensive as the um, pellet. Now let's add our coconut now, because that's definitely going to be a curiosity I have now, is will it bust through that coconut now? Because it wouldn't be four. Let's try that. All right, like before, I'm back about 10 yards. I want to have some distance in case it ricochets. And we're shooting a little bit to the right, so I'm going to hold a little bit to the left. We should hit this. I could see coconut milk from here. <laughs> Holy cow, I think it went through both. Both sides. I'm going to take a look at that. And we did, we went through both sides. Exit hole, I mean, this is astounding because this isn't just a little bit of an increase. This is a massive increase that takes it from legitimately a, a pellet gun to essentially a firearm because we're using a propellant basically. This is absolutely firearm. Wow. So if we saw this much damage at 10 yards, we should see more damage on our gong. So let's shoot the gong and see how this does. All right, let's see how the 22 does at 25 yards. Easy to make kits. All right, got a little bird spinner down there. See if I can hit that. A little bit to the left. Same thing. Try another shot here. Oh, just over the top. That's hard. All right, I'm giving up with that, but let's see how the pellet gun compares on steel. All right, diesel pellets. If I can hit the steel. I grazed something. I pulled it at the last moment, kind of jerked the trigger a little bit. Feels a lot different for a trigger pull than that 22. Yeah, that hits with some solid authority. Definitely. All right, time to try for the bird spinner. Uh, I can't imagine hitting it with this. <laughs> You know, I shot right over the top. My windage is pretty good from that distance with my adjustment. I'm gonna aim at the base of it. Oh, I pulled it a little bit to the right. Last diesel pellet. Come on, birdie. There we go. <laughs> so I'm absolutely astonished with the difference and just bumping it up 200 feet per second. That's an incredible difference because it went from a mediocre pellet gun to absolutely rivaling a firearm. We had a lot of energy, we had a lot of power. Very, very cool. So. That kind of leaves you options, kind of in, in a sense that uh, either a 9mm plus P plus round would um, 
and a regular nine millimeter pistol or a 38 special and a 357 magnum revolver that you can kind of go up if you want to now i hear this is kind of damaging on your firearms so i probably would not do it often um, and i'm probably not going to do it again after this test unless i you know get some better pellets maybe i want to push them up like super fast uh but that's what you get today i am very very surprised that was very interesting that was very cool to see so that's what you get today so as always comment share and like and thanks for watching